right. So are we going live? Mm -hmm. Are we live? Mm -hmm. Do we have any people? All right. We won't have people until <laughs> I say something. Tweet it out. Yeah. Hello, hello, my friend. Is that better? <clears throat> all right, here we go, fama lama. All right, all right, here we go. <clears throat> check, check the merch. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I can hear it from where I am. I can hear Captain Pompeo. Can you tell Steve to lower that? Yeah, I, I, I heard the whole thing. Pompeo sounds like Chris Christie to me. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't even know how to do that, Rich. I was just going to make a mention like, oh, it's on YouTube. You want to check it out? Oh, three, four minutes. One minute. Two minutes. Minute and a half. We love minutes and a half. We love minutes and halves. Half minutes. Half minutes are the best minutes. Best minute I've ever had was a half minute, you know? No, Nat. One minute now, right? One minute. <clears throat> right to go. <clears throat> Thank you. 
How do you beat an adversary that doesn't care about life, family, children? They reject God. They reject our flag. They reject our founding. They're only willing to protect themselves, but they don't care about procreation. They forsake the family. They don't care even about earning a living sometimes. They're okay with living on your tax dollars. What's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, El Conservador, your liberty-loving Latino amigo, also known to the Levinites as Mr. Call Screener. And that's Rich Valdez with an S on all the social media. If you want to check it out, we're live streaming on YouTube, something new that we're doing. But how do you defeat an opponent like this? They'll drop everything on a dime to go protest in another state. Heck, they're ready to move to another state just to win elections. People who actually hate themselves. They hate their own heritage, the founding of America. So you sit there and you think to yourself, they do all of this because they don't like liberty. They don't like the history of our country or aspects of it. Conquer. We the people is what they want to break. They're trying to separate us by race, by sex, by religion, by anything that they can do to continue to propagate their narrative. This, my friends, Americans, this is, in my opinion, an American oligarchy. This is, uh, you've been hearing so much from Mark Levin's new book about American Marxism. And these are like Marxist-loving Robin Hoods. That's what they aspire to be, all in the name of power in the name of prejudice and in the name of poverty, because that's where we all end up. This poor judgment, in my opinion, is afflicting, it's infecting a portion of our people who call themselves progressives of all things. It's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yet progress, the progress that they make is towards something that Americans reject. Most Americans are not all out crazy. Like AOC, our least favorite congresswoman from the Bronx and Queens, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, one of my favorite uh, uh, villains of this this day and age. Most Americans are not Bolsheviks like Bernie Sanders or El Bobo, Bill de Blasio in New York City. In fact, not even most Democrats are as radical or as left wing as the rest of these guys. The majority of Democrats in America I'm talking about the voters, not the Democrats in Congress. They love America. It's true. I know you're thinking, no, they don't. They, they, those aren't, that's not the majority. But like the old saying goes, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And that's because it's the noisiest, but it's not the majority, right? There's three other wheels that are rolling just fine, not squeaking. And that's what the Democrats have perfected. You see, what I want to say to them today, and I think you'll join me in this, is that America is not for sale. America is making a comeback, and albeit slow because we've got Joe El Baboso Biden in office, it's making a comeback nonetheless. I think most people would agree with me when I say I am an anti-racist. Now, t- today, guys like Professor Ibram X. Kendi would have you believe that being an anti-racist is something that you either are or aren't, right? So if you subscribe to critical race theory, And I wasn't planning to get deep into critical race theory this moment. I want to really focus on the solution to it rather than the problem. But if you if you look at that, most people don't consider themselves racist. And the idea of these folks that label themselves anti-racist is because they want to shed light on it. I don't think there's anything wrong with shedding light on something. Now, some people will reject that and say, but there isn't a massive problem with institutionalized racism. And that's arguable. That's fine. But my point is. When you begin to prostitute the truth so that you can push this agenda of hate, that's when we have a problem. And I think that's the place that we've arrived right now. So what do we do, right, as, as, a, as a people? I think, well, first of all, we have to grow a set. We have to stand up to the biggest adversary that we can find, our biggest critic, your biggest opposition, most of the time. That's you yourself, right? Aren't we all our biggest critic? People always tell me, you know, but Rich, I write my congressman. 
I'm too old to be an activist. I just can't switch my job. I have kids to care for. I say to you, ask yourself this, what will you do? Make excuses for losing or make excuses or opportunities so that we can win. And that's really the gist of what I want to focus on. I know that we oftentimes point out the problems, especially here in talk radio, a place that I love. Talk radio is fantastic because you have an opportunity to shine a light on something so that people can see it. You want to draw attention to the issue, granted. But once you've drawn attention, we have to now provide the solution. And I think that solution rests upon the shoulders of we, the people. I don't believe that we should be able to call our congressman. No, I guess, yes, you can call your congressman. But I don't think that we should solely rely upon that. We have to take things into our own hands. And I don't mean busting down doors and breaking windows at the Capitol building. But what I do mean is like Americans that I've been seeing across the country, taking to town meetings, taking to school board meetings and giving people a piece of their mind saying, you know what? Yeah, basta, no mas. I'm not interested in this. I don't like this because of this, this, this and that too. People have to have that courage. They've used cancel culture and the bully pulpit that the media possesses to come at us in so many different ways, to ostracize people that think differently. I'm wearing this shirt and I saw a young man today and he was part of the the printing crew that printed it. And uh, I use this vendor regularly. And, you know, he was saying that I did my Trump impression. I said something about, oh, it better not be made in China. No, I don't like China. And he laughed and he was like, man, it's like that guy doesn't go away. And I said, I hope he never goes away. And of course, I'm talking about former President Donaldus Magnus El Trumpito, the 45th president of these United States, Donald J. Trump, El Presidente. And when I said that, he was like, well, why wouldn't you want him to go away? And I said, man, Trump is the only person that's been leading this charge. And I shouldn't say the only, but for a quite a while, he was definitely the clear leader and still is when he was in office. And now he's an external leader because the de facto head of the Republican in so many ways is El Presidente. People take him serious. And I thought I take him very seriously. And I think many people should. He's the only guy that I can think of. And maybe I'm wrong on my history if I am. Me and give me a call, 877-381-3811, and you let me know. But I think Trumpito is probably the last or the only guy that is a citizen businessman, ran for president, and won. Not an easy task. And it's it's partially because he's a great strategist, but I think the other part of it is because people saw the value and people are tired of what's going on in Washington. People are tired of being pummeled by the politicians being beaten down by the bureaucrats. Nobody wants that anymore. When you've got governors in Texas that are saying, you know what, I'm going to build a wall because you're not doing your job. If you can be a sanctuary state, I can too. Good for him. When you've got people like Kemal Aires, the vice president of the United States, Kemal Aires, which in Spanish is, or in English is how bad she is. When Kamala Harris goes to make these trips, and we're going to get into that a little bit later, and, and just fumbles so badly, it's so clear that we're screwed. I listen to people that are left-leaning, that are commentators, you know, folks on what we'll call the other side. And they're saying things like, man, I went to fill up my car. Man, this guy Biden, they said something about this Putin stuff, and we'll get into it. And I don't want to, you know, let all the cats out of the bag here. But they said something about, you know, Putin wouldn't be talking all slick like that to Trump because they know Trump meant business. And everybody knows it. We have the commander of weak in the White House. K. Malaitis is out there doing what she does worst. Leading. And it's not working out. All sorts of financial issues that are coming our way. And the biggest thing, the biggest problem that we face is the attack on the culture, the change of the culture, things that people that they accused of the Red Scare a long time ago, 
saying, oh, you're just, you know, always, you know, look in every bush, every bush behind every bush is there is a hidden kami. People made fun of them then, they ostracized them then, they made sure that nobody took them seriously. Seems eerily familiar to what's happening now. But yet now we see the real fruits of those labors or the fruit of that labor, excuse me. So with all these things that are happening, it makes me think we have to choose. We have to look at those that have gone before us and have succeeded. We have to look at those that put their name, their career, and their reputation on the line, their life in so many ways, like Trump and like others who've served in the presidency. One that comes to mind, Reagan. So many admonitions, so many nuggets of wisdom that came from Ronaldus Magnus the Gipper. And I think we need to turn to that and be the informed patriots that he called us to be in his farewell address. We have to look at other speeches that he's done so that we can say, you know what? This is something that we need to focus on. We need to be informed. We need to be patriotic. We have to take action. And I don't mean, again, nothing violent. There's been a, a onslaught of moms across America that simply showed up at school board meetings and demanded to be heard. And guess what? They were heard and they've gone viral and people are inspired. And that is all it takes is a little bit of courage. Not to get spiritual or preachy, but it says, you know, you need faith the size of a mustard seed. Anyway, before we get into all that stuff, I want you to hear this short clip from President Ronald Reagan. Check this out. Better than we can plan them ourselves. That's what the government thinks. They think they can tell us what to do. They think they know it all. And the worst part is they're so arrogant to, to just think that they do. But again, I will quote Reagan and say, we need to tell the government, come on, get off my back. Get out of my pocket. We know what's best for us. It's the idea that we can govern our own lives, a.k.a. individualism, individual liberty. That's what makes America so strong. That even foreigners like the Tocqueville came here and said, wow, that's that's amazing. I'm going to write a whole book on this. So you look at all that and you look at what's going on with Ilhan Omar. Some people did something and so many other people that we're going to get to. I'm going to do lots of impressions. I'm not making fun of anybody, by the way. I'm not mocking them. I'm doing impressions. But keep it locked right there. Again, I am Rich Valdez. I am the host of This Is America podcast. Make sure you check it out and subscribe. And I am sitting in for the great one. Thank you, sir. Cop the shirt. Could have told me. Three minutes coming back. Three minutes. What's up, people? 
I hear me. Can you hear me? Hmm. Yes. One minute. One minute. You got me? Yeah, we'll drop six. What's up, America? Welcome back. Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S. I'm the host of the This is America podcast, filling in for the great one, Mark Levin. Of course, we're keeping him in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, Mark is out, and um, he mentioned he was having a small procedure, and uh, I do want to wish him the best and remind you to get the book, American Marxism. Um, American Marxism. Uh, I'm busy talking about American Marxists so often that I get tongue-tied, but Joe El Baboso Biden, he says some of the silliest things, and I do want to give you the phone number also, 877-381-3811, because we're going to get to your calls in a minute, and I see them coming in from everywhere, from Dallas and from New York and Ashburn, Virginia. Thank you. Joe El Baboso Biden, that is our president, 
he uh, he says one thing today. He says another thing tomorrow. I think it's really interesting that he just every week gives us more and more to criticize him about. Now, I was on Newsmax uh, last Thursday blasting Biden for his divisive and reckless comments calling white supremacy the most lethal threat to America. Now, that was last week. Now, fast forward to this week. He says climate change is the biggest threat to America. And you know why? Because some generals told him. But wait, it gets better because we've got generals that say, well, we have a different opinion of that as well. So we're going to hear all of that. But these are his words. And I believe Joe Biden, Joe El Baboso Biden, is very confused. He's frustrated, or we say confusted, because sometimes he even forgets that he's president. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, boy. If you forget your president, you're not doing your job right, sir. But I want to go back to him saying, that the biggest threat facing America is white supremacy. You know what? There's so much to unpack with that. And we, we talked about it this week. I talked about it on the podcast, but there's a whole bunch of juxtaposition that I want to do because I think this is so misguided. And he's got these fools in the back that are just, oh, yes, yes, because I, I can't walk to the bodega around the corner without, you know, bumping into a bunch of Nazis. You know, it's funny. I, I'll, I will get into it in a little bit, but I printed this article a little while ago and it had a bunch of these pictures of Klan rallies. And I'm thinking, OK, I, New York guy living in Jersey now. Got it. I haven't seen a Klan rally. Have you? Anyway, you keep it locked right there. We're just getting started. 877-381-3811. Rich Valdez in for the great one. Mark Levin. Thank you. Cop the shirt. If you haven't copped the shirt, I don't know. Where is it? <laughs> I'm listening to Mr. Producer. It is on my Twitter feed. 